Welcome to the LND Go Beyond podcast. This is the show that brings you real, actionable workplace learning insights from some of the brightest minds in the LND space. This season, we're diving into the realm of learning impact. Join experts as they share their knowledge and experiences, helping us push the boundaries of what's possible when it comes to delivering impactful learning. Get ready to go beyond. Enjoy the conversation. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for another episode of the LND Go Beyond podcast. As you know, in this season, we are focusing on learning impact. And today, we have Bob Mosher with us to talk all about leveraging the five moments of need for learning impact. Hi, Bob. Welcome to the podcast. Hi, friend. Appreciate that. Very excited about the dialogue and, and I appreciate the theme. It's, it's, a, it's a big one for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure, you know, I'm looking forward to learning from you today, but let me take a moment and briefly introduce you to our audience uh, for anyone who's out there who still don't know about you. Uh, Bob is a founding partner and chief learning evangelist at Apply Synergies, a strategy consulting firm that specializes in helping learning organizations design, develop, and measure effective learning and performance support strategies to meet the five moments of learning need. Bob has been an active and influential leader for over 40 years. He has worked with numerous global organizations, has co-authored two books, Training for Results and Innovative Performance Support, and has also received two Lifetime Achievement Awards. Brilliant. Bob, hmm. again, I'm so happy to have you join us today. Well, thanks again, friend. Yeah, yeah 40 years has been quite a journey. <laughs> well, our pleasure to have you here, and uh, I'm sure our audience is looking forward to learn from you today. Uh, five moments of need has been, you know, a framework that's got uh, a lot of people's imagination. A lot of companies are using it, but for people who are not very familiar, maybe we can start with just understanding how would you explain the five moments of need framework, and why do you think it's significant for the L and D space? Great place to start. I was a quick story. I was about midway through that 40 year journey. Um, I had a very uh, high level job, senior job at a large um, software company that uh, people may know um, that's in the northwestern part of the United States. Um, and I was in the L&D department in, in a really remarkable role. I've been asked to bring e-learning into the company. They didn't have it then. Um, and so, I mean, I mean, my friend, I, I was just I could not be happier. I, that was going to be my retirement. <laughs> right. And and then I ran f- flat into the world, into the world of apply. And what, but by that, I mean, you know, we, 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 although we certified our text brilliantly, we had award winning content uh, and I'm not refuting any of that. What, what the, the struggle was apply struggle was them leaving those remarkable training experiences. And I'm careful with my words um, and getting back to run a network effectively And so I was at a crossroads and I ran into this remarkable man who is now my business partner, has been for 10 years, Dr. Comrade Gopperson. And I, and I brought him in as a consultant at the time and said, I said, you got to look at our stuff. Something, what's wrong. If we're getting all these awards and all this type of stuff, why, why is the end result? Not what we want, which of course is people that could run networks. And my friend, he, he introduced me to a framework that was transformational for my journey from the, for the next 25 years. And that was, he said, look, the pivot for instruction or, or, or a learning solution should be the need it meets, mm-hmm. not the content it teaches. That, that's a really interesting pivot, right? And because uh, we are fairly content um, focused and I get it, right? Um, so he goes, there's five moments of need that we have to understand learners have that drive them to perform and frankly, not necessarily even learn. That, that's kind of a byproduct. And he, and he said, so here they are. Moments new and more, what we call one and two, because I might as well number them, right, are when I, I'm brand new to something. I, I don't know brain surgery. So I got to learn it, right, from the ground up. More is when I've got, I've taken the 100 
200 level courses and I want to take the 300 and 400 level courses, right? So I have a base knowledge. And so the instruction to take me to more should be a bit different than the instruction that took me to new, right? And by the way, those two needs are remarkably and brilliantly met by training, have always been. So here's the crossroads, right? This is where, so this is where he said, here's why, here's why you're screwing up right now. Here's, here's why what you're doing remarkably isn't getting you the result you want. You're missing three other important needs in your deliverable. Apply, which is the journey from new and more to doing. What Khan would say, mastery, again, just to use words, mastery to competency, right? Mastery is knowing, again, by our terms, competency is doing, right? So, so apply, he goes, and then there are two derivatives of apply that are unique. Uh, trying to apply when things change, change, oh. right? It's not an apply moment. I can apply, but but the rules have changed. So I need to understand that gap. And then lastly, so what, I, what happens when I get myself in trouble? I mean, I I I I I, I think I'm applying correctly, um, but but I've run into a derivative that doesn't make sense. So so I have to understand the the the, the cognitive um, uh, effort to problem solve. Which again is different than just applying in a comfortable because I need to mode. And and so new more, apply, change, and solve. And I will tell you, friend, that because what it forced me to do in the in the in the nature of that framework was he said, now look at what you make. Look at and, and ask yourself this simple question: which of those five needs does it meet? It was like a slap in the face professionally, <laughs> because I looked back on a on a 20-year career. Um and when I've only been new and more all this time, I, I hope apply change and solve happens. But if I, but what I'm making, what I build, is not intentionally targeting those needs, or or enabling them, if yep. that makes sense. So so that that's been the journey I've been on ever since. Yeah, I mean, uh, most of the times we are hoping that the apply part happens. <laughs> and uh, fingers crossed approach is, is something that a lot of LED programs get launched uh, with. Uh, change and solve, you know, uh, if rarely, you know, people plan for transferring to situations which are new or when situation changes or giving them so much varied practice during training. Yeah. It normally doesn't happen. Yeah. So we need to yeah. plan for that. And, 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 and I love the word you use, my friend, and that is um, intentionally going there. Yeah. You know, it, it's hoping, right. you know, it, it's, it's interesting if you've heard of 70, 20, 10 before at all, and those kinds of things, there's another, another other frameworks that are out there and there's, there's debate about the numbers and that kind of stuff. But the premise is that the majority of a performer's life is not in training. Right. A majority is in the world of apply. And what Khan challenged me with, he said, okay, look, do you want to bank your family's livelihood on, uh, on only being a part of 10% of someone's work effort? You know, and and again, it was it, it was it, these are questions I think as an industry we have to challenge ourselves with because he was right. Ninety percent of hope, I had nothing to do with, honestly, nothing to do with, and was one setting the learner up to not be able to perform as best they could, which is our job. And secondly, frankly, it, it and I think this is something we have to deal with. Is L and D was taking it on the chin. Because the 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 people who send those folks to training went, well, oh, wait a second, we're not getting what we sent them there for, right. and it's your fault. Yeah. Uh, your training's bad. Right. Um, absolutely right. not. Right. So so this is an interesting pivot that we I think we have to challenge our industry with. Yeah. Uh, I also picked something interesting that you said. You know uh, about. You know, it's not about content. It is about the needs uh, for which you are creating it. And you also said it not necessarily has to lead to learning, right? Uh, and that is something that I find a lot of uh, uh, purists uh, would argue when we, they go to the words, the five moments of need, because these are not learning needs. These are doing needs. Performance and, needs. Correct. And learning Love it. Or may not happen, right? As, which is true for performance right. support. Because I appear to be throwing darts at things like Addy. 
for right. instance, and, and, and training. I, I had once, I had, had one, one person come with me to conference, my friend once and say, oh, oh yeah. Hey, Bob, I've you know, been wanting to meet you for years. By the way, you're known as the trainer hating guy <laughs> in my company. And I was like, what? He goes, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. We've all read your stuff. We, we've nicknamed you the training hater guy. And I was like, oh gosh, okay. We have to, we have to reset here. You know, it, the five moments of need are five moments of performance need. And by the way, two of them are stunningly met with training. They, 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 so so in, so my argument for the last 20 years has always been that maybe we need to reconsider the balance of the needs and our deliverables a bit. And not, but that's not calling any of them bad, right? It's, it's it's aligning a tool in a toolkit with the right outcome. Yeah. And and I think we've got some remarkable ways to broaden that a bit and be seen more in the performance arena yeah. than just the learning training arena. I was talking to an organization the other day, buddy, and get this. He said, our listen, and we can probably go here in our talk, but he's he said, our content's so hard and important. Listen to those words. It's so hard and important. Yeah that we won't let anyone touch anything until they've had, listen to this, three to five days of knowledge training. What? Yeah. <laughs> three to five, in other words, what he's saying is three to five days of a fire hose, three to five days of terminology, definitions, knowledge with no context, knowledge, 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 knowledge. And I'm just like, and you think that's like good instruction, you know, and so that's that pivot you're bringing up about things being for learning sake. Yeah. Absolutely. That's what that was. Absolutely. Knowledge for knowledge sake. Mm -mm. Yeah, I think that that's a typical SME uh, mindset, mm. I can say, uh, because they have really compiled their skills. SMEs play a great role, of course. They have devoted yes. life to become SMEs. So they are role models and we should pick up things from them. But this part, which is about what should be giving them, like you said, knowledge training is what they are really focused on. Yeah. So yeah. We should the irony of those folks, you guys, is they, my friend, is that um, they're the last people that should be in the room sometimes. <laughs> Honestly. And, I, and again, I got, I get bashed about this too, <laughs> because, you know, it's, it's, I'm trying to, I, my, when I, I, I was doing a leadership, we'll talk about this in a minute, workflow analysis, as we call it, which is understanding the work, not the doing or knowing. Oh. Literally, it's understanding the work, the, the flow of the work that we're trying to enable people in. And it was leadership. Oh. It was for leadership training. We had remarkable leaders in the room, 20 plus year, remarkable leaders telling us what the onboarding course should be for a leader, right? Well, guess what? There was one new leader in the room who was very quiet. And eventually he raised his hand and said, can I just jump in here? Here's the thing. I, I This is unbelievable. And I hope someday I can be all of you. I really do. But I just got to be honest. If this course is for me, I don't know what, I don't see anything up here that helps me in the first 30, 60, 90 days of leading. And my friend, it took the, it completely took the air out of the room because all the SMEs looked at this whiteboard of stuff and went, uh, yep. You know, we have lost context of the learner or performer in that, um, in that area. And, and that happens in almost every discipline I've seen when SMEs are the tip of the sword. Absolutely. And I think, yeah, that's a, that's a big hurdle. Uh, but let's set one record straight. So you're not a training hater. You are a training <laughs> extender. Essentially, ah. the first two moments are being met mostly well by training, but it's the other three which we are missing out on. So that's really the missing piece in mm. training effective, which is where the, let's say the three moments of need are may, maybe the, the crucial bits that needs to be added mostly to what we are already doing. Not that we're doing particularly well, the first two, we need to refine them as well. Maybe we need shorter. We can't really keep dumping five days of knowledge. <laughs> we need to see what goes where, when, 
and then see what we can put in the other three moments. So if no one remembers anything else about this time with me, I want them to remember this, that there's the fundamental pivot and, and what, what made this work for me and changed again, what I do 20 years ago was that the, I love your word. It, it, it's extending what training is. The journey training starts into where, as you said, the most critical needs happen for a performer. They don't care about new and more. They really don't. Nor does the people who send them there. What they care about is the, is what is the derivative that, that, that you get from that, which is apply, solve, and change. So often I'm asked, you know, you know, some of the some of what are some of the fundamental things to to begin this journey, and so on. Design for apply first, not new and more first. It will change everything that you do. If you truly, because the first thing you'll ask yourself is, okay, wait, 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 okay, wait, wait, okay, then I don't really don't want to know what's important or people need to know. I don't need that yet. I don't, I don't understand what they do. I don't know what apply means in the context of a new leader here, a call center agent, a Excel user, a salesperson, you fill in the role. Right. So the first thing, if I'm going to make this pivot is no, 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 no. Don't give me SMEs in a room. And, and we're going to finish, we're going to, we're going to finish with five days of training before we've even, we've even said anything. Um, no, 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 no. The first thing I have to do is understand why, what apply is yeah. really, because then I can back into new and more as you brilliantly outline in a very different way. We over teach. I have can't say this enough. We do a real disservice to people in our outlines. Me too. Right. And so we have to have a way to responsibly vet that and do less. Have it be more targeted. How's this for something? Maybe skip some things that the SME thinks based on the workflow we, ana we did an analysis of. Sure. <laughs> Someday that might be really powerful, but, mm -mm, you know, but we've never had a context with which to have that conversation, my friend. That's been the problem. So guess what? Everything makes the whiteboard. I, I think you've covered uh, a part of this in terms of, you know, finding the significance of this model for l &D teams. But are there more points on why the l &D teams have been not able to achieve impact? What are the common challenges? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a great question. And it's one we got to solve. ROI, darn it. I hate that acronym. I really, really do. You know, if, if those who don't know it, it's return on investment. And by the way, every other line of business has to align to it often, but us. How was that for something? Slap in the face. I was once told by a senior SVP of sales that you want a seat at the table? <laughs> you guys keep complaining about that. You learning people. You want a seat at the table. Come with the with the responsibility I have then. I like you, Bob, and we and everyone loves training, but I'll be honest with you, if you want to sit in the C-suite room, you better be able to come with a very different set of data and a very different set of questions than you come with now. So my friend, you're, you're, that's part of our problem is because we have led with training, because we've been in, downstream in the dialogue, you know, we're the add-on thing. After all the performance questions have been have been answered, you know the IT system has been picked. You know the whoever's going to have to use it's been decided, and then they go, well, okay, oh, we need training. Let's let's do training. You know that's that order of operation is so flawed. But that's how we've been seen, if I, right. And so if we want to be seen more towards impact, then study impact. You know, study the the metrics and so on that businesses held them. Uh, KPIs. I mean, I, I know a lot of L and D people don't even know what that acronym stands for. You know, key performance indicators. Yeah. You know, I, I once had an L and D person after I after I talked about this go, okay, wait, so 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 how do I teach those? And I was like, wait, wait, what? Wait, what, what? You, know, so you said I have to, you know, I have to be, I have to understand KPIs. I'm assuming that means because I train them. And I'm like, oh my gosh, here we go. No, 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 no. You know, it, it, but but a key performance indicators are the performance every organization's held accountable to to achieve their financial and sustainable goals. We've been so removed from that 
for years, right? So, so we have to change the narrative to one of performance first, and then we'll build whatever solution we need to as professionals. We are only professionals. The organization is asking us in, in that role to build the right solution. We have taught them to, to say that that means training. My point is, and and I get I get it, you guys, because I've been on this for for over twenty years. This is turning an ocean liner around. I get this, because part of it's our own fault. That's kind of how we've set ourselves up. It's it's what our metrics have been: smile sheets, satisfaction, attendance, um, completion, certifications. You know, these have been the metrics that we've pivoted on a lot. You know, compliance training: how much have we done? How many people passed it? These kinds of things. Those are means to a performance end. And we have to get more in the, you know, performance side of the, if, if we want to be allowed to do less training, mm -hmm. we have to um, help those we serve understand that what they really want isn't necessarily always met by training. That's a mouthful, my friend. <laughs> I have personally experienced when, uh, this is, you know, uh, clients that we speak with. Uh, most of the times they would be handed down a requirement and simply said, give us training on this. And yep. what ways uh, we have tried to influence to align it better is to ask the stakeholders, uh, what are you currently measuring that you expect to change? Perfect. Uh, yeah. One, 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 one we often ask along that same line, which is exactly aligned to that, is what will success look like? Yep. When we're done with this, you, and whether you realize it or not, that's what got that's what brought you here. Because you were now you may not associate it with me per se, but you sat down and there's a business problem ends result that that you think this what we're gonna make helps. Before we go to the five days of 90 learnings on. You know, before we start pulling a hammer out of our toolkit, let's decide if we have a nail or not. We have to broaden our toolkit. What met me head on when I first started this was if you change the conversation, you better have a different deliverable. Because if you change the conversation to performance, if you move out in the world of apply, change, and solve, and your answer is another class, mm, you know, that's, and, and, I, and, and I got, I got yelled at for that because it was, it was almost like, okay, look, you want, you, you kind of dangled this carrot in front of me that we're going, we're going to a different place here. And then you can't, and then you still came back with an outline. Yeah. You still came back with three days blended with the learning, you know, all these things we were, I was doing in the nineties and the person came back and said, that wasn't the question that you asked me. And so I expected from you a different solution. I, I, I used it. Which, which, by the way, may have included training, and by the way, almost always does. But you see what I mean, and and that's that's part of where we take our work down to the down to the deliverable design level yeah. of the conversation. Makes sense. All right. So, if somebody wants to, you know, uh, move into the five moments of need yep. for framework and start adapting it. What are the first few steps? Number one, study the discipline. Okay. Right. You know, there, there are, there are five moments and he's been around a long time. Dr. Godfrey has been at this for 50 years, believe it or not, 50 years. He was talking about five moments before he knew the five moments were five moments. Like anything, we have a responsibility to study the science of learning. We have a five moments of need.com website with a number five moments of need, but just Google. Secondly, then though, to get more pragmatic about it, uh, I recommend two things. Number one, take a look at your analysis process. ADDIE, right? A-D-D-I-E. -D -D analysis is the A. Now, I hope, boy, do I hope, and well, I've seen this not be the case, that you've got each of those letters associated with a, a fairly rig rigorous process that you can duplicate over and over and over again to make good stuff. Analysis is where it begins, my friend. And if you look at your analysis to what you said earlier, what questions are you asking? Are, are you, when someone walks in your office and says, I'd like, I'd like five days of training on the CRM we just bought, 
Yes. Is your answer okay? Yes. Okay. Uh, when can I get your people in a room to do my analysis of those five days of what the training should be? Wrong, right? That that to your very point. What 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 journey in the early stages of analysis do you walk your those you serve through that takes you down a five moments apply performance path, not a five days of three e learnings on path. It's it's turning that ocean liner around. Um, so so that would be number one. Mm -hmm. um, the la last thing I'll add, number two, is there is a discipline called um, workflow analysis, mm -hmm. right? And it is just that. It is a prescriptive way to walk those you serve, SMEs, and I, and I love your point earlier, not SMEs, through, we have to understand the work first. If we don't have a clear view of the workflow, I'm shooting darts at a, at a target. I, I don't, and maybe the wrong one. Yeah. And and I guarantee you, I'll probably make the wrong thing to do it. So understand the discipline. Look at your analysis journey, the, the narrative, and and understand workflow analysis yeah. as a as a complement to that, because that's where it begins. You know, even for L and D folks, like we are talking about skills for everyone else. Even for LD <laughs> folks, this is like new stuff and they will Huge. Have to move into apply stage and then they will have to look at when things change because different stakeholders will react differently and those kind of things. Yeah. So even for them, it's going to be some sort of hit and trial and, and they will probably make some errors initially. But of course, there are still the three big steps that they need to master as they go through this uh, process. Is there more? Yeah, absolutely. Let, let's peel the onion back. So that, yes. So Dr. Godfordson, God bless him, in his rigor around this, he realized a couple of things early on that he was up against daddy. Every every L&D team he went into loved daddy. <laughs> Under, by the way, understandably so. Because responsibly, we need a methodology to do what we do. I, I walk into a doctor for you know, my knee. I want him to be schooled or her to be schooled in, in the world of that, right? And I want them to him to follow him or her to follow accepted practices and so on. Not I don't want to making it up. So understandably, we gleaned on to Addy early on because it was proven it worked. It makes training really well. Khan realized that we have something a little a derivative here that's a bit different. And so he said, I've got to be able to give L and D folks a a um, not framework, but a methodology, which is a different thing with which to do this. And so if, you know, again, I'll just use Khan's acronym here. He uses something called ENABLE, E-N-A-B-L-E, because okay. we like Addy, yeah. A-D-D-I-E. Yeah. You know, we like, so he, he gets it, right? And, and, and what's wonderful about ENABLE is that it maps very closely in some ways to Addy and still, because again, we're not, we're not training haters here. We are extending that methodology, right? So Addy does that. And so to your question, what it gets down into next is that, and I'm going to get in the pieces parts here, is when you do workflow analysis, there's two more things you have to do next. And, and, and again, I, I know people may not be this far into the journey pra practically, but but I want to kind of have them see the landscape. And I, the next thing is something called, um, because what will be identified in workflow analysis are three things. Tasks that are performed, mm -hmm. right? Because that's what workflow is. Workflow is a, is a, is a bunch of tasks. Well, guess what? Tasks are grouped into processes. Mm -hmm. So in an analyzing your tasks, you will discover processes and they can be darn complex, right? But that's the nature of work. Yeah. And then third, you have to understand stuff to do. You still have to know stuff, okay. right? So so the, the third thing that comes out is what's called supporting knowledge. Mm -hmm. But I love the wording. He did, We don't just say knowledge. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. Because if you do, then you get that whiteboard from leadership full of everything. All right. The reason I love supporting knowledge, my friend, in that thing is because it is in support of the tasks you identified, not the role or the discipline of leadership or the software of CRM. That's when we go too wide and scary. Supporting knowledge says, look, if you've identified these tasks, I'm going to only 
then help pe my, my performers understand the knowledge that supports the performance of those tasks and nothing else, nothing else, even though it might be nice. So the next level of it, of in a workflow analysis is you get task, I'm gonna give them in the order, tasks, processes, and then supporting knowledge. And then, then there's the next thing that, that becomes really powerful mm -hmm. in this. So now that I've got the view of that landscape, I really don't have a deliverable yet. But, but because I know the work and what helps it happen, my ability next to build a solution is amazing, but I need one more, I need one more filter, my friend, one more filter, because here's the danger. I could still go off and build a, a huge class with that. I could build a huge workflow class, five days, nine days long. We haven't moved the needle, right? So Khan came up with this brilliant uh, 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 analysis called critical skills analysis. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's sole purpose my friend, its sole purpose is to give performance context to those tasks. And by that, I mean the outcome of the performance of the task. Because what Khan realized is if SMEs love to pivot on importance, they love the word important. And guess what? Everything's important, by the way. Khan needed a way to look at those people and go, well, you know, maybe not. Um, because is every task is the outcome of every task equal? And so he came up with this rubric. It's a literal tool. It's a rubric of critical skills that says, look, if the outcome of this task is minimal, meaning if I, if I, if I perform it and screw it up, you know, the whole deal, is the impact of that failure minimal or one? Or is it catastrophic uh, on his rubric seven? Why this is powerful is if I have that lens of the of the tasks, here's what becomes here. This is the second life changing thing for me. We were throwing word called blended learning around for a long time in our industry. Um, Khan would argue it's blended training, not blended learning. We, we kind of just mix up classes and e-learning and, you know, take five days, make it three. No, that's blended training, he would call it. Blended learning is saying, look, now that we have tools like digital coach, performance support, you, AI, frankly, right? Things we can now enable our learners with in the workflow. Um, what should we still teach then? What is worth teaching? And what Khan realized is it's not about importance. It's about outcome. If someone dies doing it, I am not going to make them learn it while doing because <laughs> Because the outcome is too catastrophic, right? Why would I do that? If the if and to use his rubric, this is a principle, not a rule. But if it's a four or lower, what we're saying is the outcome doesn't really kill anyone, hurt anybody. We don't lose clients. We don't get sued. You don't lose your job, but you failed. And Khan's point is the great. And this is this is another principle. The best teacher in life is not a teacher. The best teacher in life is life. Is doing it. But but some things responsibly have to be taught because the outcome is too severe to learn while doing. It is when you lay critical skills analysis over a workflow analysis, what becomes crystal clear, my friend, is what's worth training on. Yeah. Not important, not important, but what's worth training on. Here's where we, here's where we broaden our, our reach, right? Here's where we, where we move into ROI. What can I build other tools for? Mm -hmm. Embedded workflow stuff, performance support, digital coach, use AI that says, look, the learner can safely, with guidance, always with guidance, um, survive doing this on their own. And when they emerge, they will learn and be performers way better than they were otherwise. But what do I still have to teach? And what we find on average when we compare outlines, because we've done this, so, and this is where you were going earlier, is that half or more of the outlines that we've put this process through, if they existed to begin with, shouldn't have been taught because the outcome of failure didn't warrant it. And with support, the performer would learn better on their own. It's kind of mind blowing to L&D, yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and, and it's where, it's where our impact um, and reach 
yeah. can change dramatically. Um, in workflow analysis, you get task process supporting knowledge. Yeah. Critical skills analysis, you get your blended blueprint. Yeah. And now you build. For too long, we started with, uh, they want five days of training. I, I'll learn that in a minute, but, or I've signed up for 10, 10 e-learnings. When I saw this, wait a minute, really, I was like, what was I doing? <laughs> what was I doing for 20 years? By the way, it was always, I, my intent was never malicious. And it was, it was good training, but, mm, you yeah. know, did, did, did we do what we, did we get we, what, what uh, those we serve wanted? Supporting knowledge process and task. Uh, it has a, a kind of a little bit of a parallel with uh, Kathy Moore's mapping. Yes. Action mapping. Yes. No, Kathy, well, and it, we've done some alignment with that. Yeah. It's, it's a great way to look at what are they supposed to do, look at that performance focus first, and what is the minimum content required for them, which mm -hmm. the knowledge burden will come down in trainings. The second part, which is the critical skills analysis, I think that's brilliant because, and I'm seeing it from a slightly different perspective. Uh, so it's like an ERP system where everybody needs to know everything. If we were to do this uh, critical skills analysis role-wise for the same ERP system, you would probably have different parts and much smaller programs and uh, something which is really relevant to each of those individuals. It, I mean, it, 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 you're brilliant. And that's when I did my first one, or I should say watch my first one, I wasn't ready. But when I watched Khan do his first one, I was in the back of the room just literally gasping at times because of what I watched unfold. And as a designer which we all are, I saw the implications right away. Mm -hmm. Because once he went to critical skills, the, the room naturally went to, we're gonna, everyone gets the ERP training and typically it pivots on availability, not role, which is terrifying. But, and then you're right. It, then the senior manager sits in the room going, why am I here? Mm -hmm. this, this stuff, I don't do any, I don't do half of this stuff. Right. The sales rep next to him is loving it. So once you went to um, critical skills analysis, the natural dialogue goes to roll. Because they look at the task and you start talking about criticality and go, you know what, if managers don't do that, we're in trouble. But managers don't do that. I don't want managers doing that. Because the, the, the sales rep should do that. You know, that, and then the, the fives, the sevens, the fours start coming out and a, and a mosaic of the of the work, the 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 deliverable, the solution becomes <laughs> uh, one of my favorite litmus tests with this was when I used to finish Addy. If I if I can, you know, and finished um needs analysis. Very few of the SMEs when they got done were like, okay, uh, I want to see this or I want to help more. They were like, we're done. I hope this was helpful, but you know, we're we're out of here. I've watched people in the room come up and go, okay, look, what do you do? What, what happens next here? What, 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 what if you're going to make something, can I see it? Do, do I get to use it? Do I, that should tell us that we're, we're, we're in a different realm of performance and dialogue than we were when we were going to make a five day training thing. Fantastic. Uh, let's look at, if, if you have any, uh, real world success uh, yes. stories examples that you can share with with our listeners sure sure let me let me give you a couple yeah i want to go to different disciplines because i want to show the versatility of this if that makes sense yeah because often there, one of the myths i hear from this is okay bob i get this task is task i can see how this works for it training for instance because it's super task based mm -hmm. but this will never work for leadership training because it's a soft skill Hmm. Oh my gosh, I wish we'd never said that word, those <laughs> words. Because I, I had a leader once tell me, this is anything but soft. This is hard. This is, leading is hard, <laughs> right? But what you learn when you do rapid workflow analysis correctly is that every job is performed with tasks. It is. So back to your question, two examples. Number one was an onboarding course. And I love picking an onboarding because it's really where the journey starts for a lot of learners. Mm -hmm. And if I may, a lot of onboarding classes are terrible. 
They do anything but onboard people. I once had a senior vice president of a company sitting through a workflow analysis watching. He was he was just watching. He turned to me at one point and goes, we don't have onboarding here. We have offboarding. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I know. <laughs> because he's like, holy cow, no wonder people start their first day or their first week or their first month here completely confused and overwhelmed. <laughs> right? Because there's no contextual pivot for onboarding. It's There, there was an onboarding course for a large um global service provider company took 18 months mm. listen to that 18 months for this particular role because it was so important that they just really didn't trust literally the word they never used the word trust but that was the point they mm. never trusted this role to stand self-reliant listen to this 18 months they had coaches they had and 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 if you did the math roi and here the attrition was over 50%. So not only do you throw all that money at the thing, 18 months and stuff, you lose half the people. How's that for ROI? And by the way, when when they did a lot of exit interviews, one of the things people shared was, I never was allowed to do my job. <laughs> I didn't feel trusted here. I've been here for, been here for 18 months. And still, I still got this coach. So anyway, we, we did rapid workflow analysis of the onboarding, of not just the onboarding, but the role these people started with. If you're onboarding them, you're onboarding them to do something. Yep. And yeah, they have to know the benefits and stuff, but that's it's not equally critical as some other things in the critical skills analysis thing. They can look up the benefits, frankly. So we did the whole thing. And it, what was wonderful is they, because it was a, in, in, that, in that world, things are measured very hourly. They're billable, yeah. right? So they had remarkable measurements on performance. Hmm. So in the end, here was their goal. They wanted to reduce the onboarding by half big savings, nine months versus 18. That also means that you have a productive worker a year earlier. Oh. Think about that. Yeah. So coaching dropped, yeah. right? The, the the ability for the person to have a higher workload up. These are all ROI measurements, yeah. not knowing passing completion. Yeah. So when they got done, shifting to five moments, uh, pivoting on apply, that program went from 18 in year in the originally to nine in the first year, nine months, yeah. five in the second, mm -hmm. 18, yeah. nine, five. Coaching. The average coach had to take on um, three to one okay. to manage these people in the 18 month thing. So you had a full-time employee, a, a billable employee yeah. who had to monitor three employees to, to get their job done. That went from a scale of one to three to to five to seven, which sounds like it's more work. It wasn't. What it meant was the workload was spread out more so that they could take on more. They had they could coach less, therefore coach more people. Does that make sense? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Their ability to perform and get to a performance level by head. I mean, so these are all the rubrics around this stuff. Another one's manufacturing. Hmm. The reason why I like manufacturing, same thing. It's all about throughput. Yeah. They have data that shows if a machine goes down by the minute, how much did they, they lose, right? So large manufacturing firm, they did training. They took people off the line yep. to learn. That's downtime. Mm -hmm. Other people around them had to come away from their work when the machine went down to walk someone through, making sure it could work again. And again, all these remarkable rubrics around that stuff. They built embedded, and by the way, in both cases, they targeted towards apply. They built embedded learning. They built a, 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 a digital coach, we call it, in, in the context of work first. Mm -hmm. um, targeted training second. Blended, right? And they were able to reduce downtime by 2 3%, which sounds small. But if you're in manufacturing, mm -hmm, it's a lot. Um, and, uh, ability to, to be coached reduced by half. The ability for line workers to move to other lines quicker because they learned how to be self-reliant within the, the digital coach and, and manufacturing. They, it wasn't this, because you're on line A, if you move to line B, it's a reboot. Hmm. We restart. No, 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 no. You taught me how to self-learn in line A. I move into line B, same model. Yeah. So yeah, there's some nuances. I get it. I have to learn and, and I might get trained on those, but... Their ability to move across lines went up significantly. You know, these are all remarkable examples of how 
when we shift to apply first and build for that and training to su in support of it, how we can one measure ROI in ways I think we've always wanted. And secondly, um, impact performance in some, and be seen in a very different way. Yeah, absolutely. Great examples, uh, Bob. Thanks for sharing. Uh, sure. One, one thought that came to my mind, you, you talked about embedded learning and you spoke about workflow yes. learning earlier. Clarify to me, you know, uh, Thank you. Into, uh, what do you mean by these two terms? Yes. The one yes. And the same? Because this is another huge pivot and that's you got to build something. You have to build a deliverable. And if I may, again, back to terminology, because I think we have to call this something. In the old days, Gloria Geary, look her up, called it an EPSS, yeah. Electronic Performance Support System. But it was always attached to IT yeah. in those days. We've left that acronym, frankly, behind because of the legacy. Cool. We call it a digital coach. And this is important to understand the, the definition of this. Workflow learning is not something that's available at work. Cool. Like e-learning, frankly. Yeah. It's available while I work, but I have to step away from work to take it. Does that make sense? Right. right? Workflow learning is a tool that is embedded in the work yeah. while I'm working. And when I come across a task I can't perform or need to do, I learn it with the workflow, with the embedded learning while I'm still doing the work. Yeah. Makes sense? It's not practice. It's literally while working in, in the context. And again, people can look it up. There's examples they can see, you know, that type of stuff to understand. But At the simplest level, would that, let's say, mean a checklist? Checklist Manifesto, one of the best books ever written, in my opinion. Right. Brilliant well, book. As a doctor, right? <laughs> and and so, so read it, folks. Again, this gets back to understanding our stuff. Read Gloria Geary's book. It's old, but read it. It's an amazing foundational book. When I want to be careful, we say digital coach, we mean that as a concept, not necessarily a thing. A digital coach can be a job aid, a PDF. Now that's in its most, frankly, immature form. It can also be this behemothy AI thing and stuff. That, in my opinion, yeah. falls in the bucket. Yeah. But you're correct. And that's again to your point. Where, where can people start? Make better job aids. It's rudimentary, but it's a place to step in, dip yeah, your toe um, in. And it actually, uh, you know, I think if you focus on job aids or checklists, I think it is starting with the apply in mind and reducing yes. the knowledge bit a little and freeing yes. up those minds because you're not pushing everything into their heads and keeping something outside. And I think there's a lot of benefit in that. I love that. I love that. And again, it's a crawl, walk, run, friend. Really? You know, it is a crawl, walk, run. I, I, I have the luxury of being an SME, frankly, right? I'm, here, I, here I bash them and I am one in a way, right? Yeah. And, I, and I'm the first to realize when I was listening to this for the first time, I was nowhere near this. And I get that. But um, so take those small steps. Look at how many jobs. A lot of times I hear, well, you know, if I have time, I make job aids. Whoa. Let me give you a little pivot for a second. Just think about this. What if you made them first? Yeah. Yeah. What if you made... You understand the workflow, it will change what you make after that. Yeah, I think lots of great uh, points and takeaways. I'm sure uh, this should uh, give an introduction and inspire a few people to pick up the five moments of need framework. Bob, mm. it's been lovely to chat with you. Thank you so much for sharing all of oh my gosh, friend. experiences and insights. Well, as you can tell, I'm passionate about it. Thanks for putting up with me. You know, follow those that listen, follow up. Really, there's resources to look at. Love to help in a way I can. So appreciate the opportunity to be here and, and really enjoy the dialogue. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you.